Hi guys, it's Sarah, the owner and creator of Multifarious Nature. Uh, thank you for joining me today. If you're a returning viewer, I'm so glad you're back. And if you're new, welcome. And please feel free to subscribe below. And if you hit the bell for notifications, you'll be notified when I post new videos, um, which I try to do weekly if possible. That's my goal. So I try to stick to it. It doesn't always work out that way, but I am, I'm gonna apologize in advance if you guys hear a bunch of banging and stuff in the background. Um, like I said in prior videos, my husband likes to work on the weekends on the house, so sometimes there's stuff going on in the background. And um, you're not like losing your mind. Yes, I am wearing the same sweater that I was last weekend. I am trying so, or two weekends ago, trying so hard to wear my sweater as much as possible. I was so excited when I finally finished it. And it's still cold enough today. It was well, technically, it's almost 60 degrees out. I think it's 57 today, Fahrenheit. And, um, you know, normally you probably wouldn't wear a sweater in that weather. But uh, this is that Icelandic wool. It's uh, Plutolopi, and it's held with um, an alpaca that's like a very fine alpaca lace weight. And it's awesome because even though it... Um, is very warm so like when it's really cold out it'll keep that keep the heat in it also breathes really well so um, so I can regulate my body temperature I don't get really hot which is really fascinating I haven't had a lot of um, you know uh, like natural fiber sweaters normally they're like acrylic blends and stuff like that so um, I only have a couple now that I've made that are um, like Icelandic wool and so because they're natural fiber they just breathe so well and um, re regulate temperature wise so even though it is like 60 almost almost 60 degrees like 57 degrees Fahrenheit here I am wearing my little sweater and I I mean I'm warm don't get me wrong quite comfortable but I'm wearing a tank top under it and um, I feel just cozy comfy and uh, it, it's amazing so I'm just really impressed. <laughs> Usually this time of year, I'm not wearing sweaters, but I'll wear sweatshirts. So this like is an equivalent of a sweatshirt. It's not very spring looking. It's definitely a little bit more fall. I feel like this is a good in-between season look uh, with this plum color and this natural fiber. So I feel like I can kind of get away with it. And I just, I don't even care. I just really wanted to wear it. So I did. <laughs> so that's what I've got on again. And, um, I hope you had a wonderful Easter. It uh, it was beautiful here, really, really nice out. So um, we had a good Easter. And uh, let's dive into works in progress, shall we? It, the first is the shop update work in progress, which is the All of the Lights cardigan by Jorge Lotelli. I've been working on this quite a bit in the past two weeks. I actually got quite a bit of progress. But I have to say, it is quite tedious still. Um, as you can see here, so again, I always like to show a picture so you guys can see what it looks like because it's a very slow going project. But this is what it looks like. Gorgeous um, cardigan, kind of uh, like a jacket a little bit. This is a longer cardigan. And I am using um, my hand dyed yarn, which is Multifarious Nature yarn in the colorway Scarlet. And you can see it is a tonal red. And, okay, so I'm pretty sure this is where we left off last week, was midway down the back portion. So I completed that section. I'm so excited, guys, I moved on to another section. So now I have the top of the shoulders, I've got down the back shoulder area finished. And there's going to be a heck of a lot more going down the back, but so this is what I've got so far. And then I'm also, uh, I also just finished the right, right side going down the front panel section. So you've got your shoulder area and then this is starting to go down the front of the cardigan. 
So there's this beautiful cabling that goes down the side of the front opening of the front. And then you've got the rest of the patterning here. And now I am just starting, oh, here we go. <laughs> just starting to do the left front panel. So if you're not familiar with this pattern, it's done in sections and it's quite intricate. You have lace work, cable work, braids, uh, like Aran, I think that's what they call it, Aran cabling, like it's a, a cabling look to it. So there's all kinds of wonderful textures and everything. So you can kind of see this now. So this is the back, this goes on your shoulders, and then this goes down the front. So it would be like, <laughs> it, it would be like this. So this is what it's going to look like basically so far. That's all I have so far, but you can see how it's going to go down. It's beautiful lace work with little bobbles on it. It's really pretty. And I'm excited about it. Um, so one thing Hoki did mention in the pattern, and I haven't been good about doing it, and I should have, but haven't. And I'm, I know I'm going to kick myself with it because you can see all these little strings. Like, look at all those strings hanging out everywhere, all over the place everywhere because I'm alternating two skeins because it's hand dyed. Um, with hand dyed yarn you really want to alternate skeins if you're doing something that's like a sweater or anything like that because you don't really want a lot of color pooling. Now this is a tonal but even though it's tonal there are kind of dark areas, lighter areas and if you don't want like pooling so large sections of that coloring in your sweater um, also you do run the risk one hand dyed yarn being slightly different, like maybe slightly lighter, maybe slightly darker. You're a little safer with tonals, but I do think it's a good idea to alternate. And that way you get a real even variegation throughout your whole sweater. So I have a bunch of skeins for this. This is gonna take a bunch of skeins for this, this sweater. But it's looking pretty good working pretty good but what she recommended is weaving in your ends as you go should have done that should have done that so I might try to do that going forward but yeah we'll see we'll see about that I don't know all right so Next work in progress is some socks. And I actually, like, I did a lot of knitting, you guys, these past two weeks. And on Easter in particular, I really, really, like, I don't know. All, I just had, a, it was a really good weekend. And I, I don't know about you guys, but I love Easter. I love it so much. Um, it's a really special holiday. And I just, I feel like you really... I don't know, I feel like you actually get to maybe relax and unwind, and it's just different from many other holidays. So I did have a very peaceful Easter, which I hope you all did as well. And I worked on the these socks. I started doing these, I think, just before Easter weekend. And okay, I didn't stick to this pattern 100%, but I use this as a guideline. I have not done socks in a while, and I have a love-hate relationship with socks because I used completely awful, super cheap uh, circular needles the first time around. And I made a whole bunch of socks, same pattern, and I think I just got fried of it. So I decided to try another pattern. This is the pattern. It's the um, Surprise Stripes by Anna Joanna. And so these are like thigh-high socks. Now, I'm not opposed to making thigh-high socks. I think that would be fun. Um, but I actually decided to just basically use this patterning as a guideline and um, do my own thing using my remnant little mini skeins from my advent calendar from my, it's the 2020, um, a chick that knits, good grief, a chick that knits advent calendar and, um, I just had a bunch of yarn left over from that, even though I made that huge, beautiful shawl, um, the Shake It Up shawl, again, by Anna Joanna. So a pattern emerges. 
I am using the same, it's the same uh, designer's work. This is a pattern, I think that's an earlier pattern of hers. It was free on Ravelry. They're toe-up socks, which I've never done. I've only done from the cuff down. And uh, that was a nice change, something different. And it also has a short row heel with a garter stitch, which I haven't done that either. So, yay. Uh, so the one foot really, really fast, actually, because I've gotten so used to knitting larger pieces like cardigan, or not cardigans, but sweaters and shawls that when I did the socks, it was a really nice change because guess what? They're smaller, <laughs> so they go faster. Okay, so uh, full disclosure, it is slightly big. Slightly big as in it's just slightly loose feeling, which and now I haven't blocked it or washed it yet, but I feel like when I wear it, it's gonna, because I always kind of stretch out as you wear them. So I feel like it might end up being a little loose. So the second sock, I'm actually making it a little bit smaller. So they'll be slightly different sizes, but hopefully it won't be super obvious that they're different. Now I wear a size uh, eight and a half shoe. So I, you know, I have a decent size foot. <laughs> As I was saying, oh, this sock looks huge. Now, a lot of it is the balance. You have this really short cuff. Like I actually did a short cuff. I just wanted a short cuff. Usually I do longer cuffs. So it kind of balances the length with the length of the foot, just looking at it, but so these are just using, I did the helical, I think it's considered like the helical method. Um, I've seen a bunch of people talk about it. Hey Brownberries, the video that I watched, and what she did is showed how you could attach colors by weaving in your ends as you go, which is oh, amazing, amazing, because you've got so many ends. So I basically just did different colors, and I just kind of picked them up in a certain order. I looked at it and I'm like, I want to use that one next, you know? And then I matched the heel and the toe section. And I think it turned out pretty good. Now it's a scrappy sock. It's supposed to be fun and crazy. And I think that made it even more fun to work on. And I, ha I, went, I tried it on and I thought, wow, that heel looked really good on. Now I haven't worn, like I said, short row heels like this. I've only done heel flap and gusset and those fit really well. But again, they always were a little bit loose. So maybe this will fit my heel better. I feel like I've heard a lot of different people say certain heels fit their feet better. So maybe this will be a better fit for me. I hope so. I hope so. Um, so I finished the one sock <laughs> and this is the second sock. So I'm, a, ooh. <laughs> I'm about here. Uh, here, there we go. Here, just starting this colorway here on the second sock. So I'm almost there. Um, you know, it, it goes really, really quick. And this is a really nice one um, on my lunch breaks. So I actually started multiple, multiple uh, projects, like actually working on them simultaneously. So that feels good. I feel like I'm getting a little bit more back into my, my the way I knit. You know, I, I like to have at least three projects going and they're all varying projects. So like I said, uh, that all oh, the lights cardigan is super involved, intricate, and I have to focus on it. So it's not really a very good one to do when I'm watching something that I really want to watch or be engaged in deep conversation because I just I can't when I'm working on that. However, um, with these socks, I can definitely do that because it's just stocking at stocking that stitch. So it's very easy. And I work on this on my lunch break at work because it's really quick to bring with me. And I just have a pair of scissors in there so that I can cut my ends as I, after I finish weaving them in as I go, and I just have them in my little, little bag here. And that is super easy to take to work. And I'm enjoying it quite a bit. So that's a really fun project. I'm almost done with that. It's going quickly. 
it's a nice change to go from really involved, really big projects to something that's quick and, and a lot easier, which brings me to my next project, which is the same idea. Um, and not exactly a quick project, but easy compared to everything else. And I can do it when I'm watching movies at night. Um, we tend to watch like TV in the evening after dinner and to like unwind. So um, the next project I'm working on is my first ever, I'm pretty positive, my first ever uh, pattern by Melanie Hoffman. So this is a purchased pattern, just like all the lights cardigan. The um, Forager sweater, which I'm sure you've heard of. A lot of people have done it and I can see why, because it is a beautiful, uh, simple looking sweater. It's uh, in a sense that there's a lot of stock stockinette stitch. It's in the round top down so you can try it on as you go. It has I think like one by one ribbing for the cuffs and the bottom. So it's a, a relatively um, basic in, in the sense of um, skill level and would probably be an excellent beginner pattern. Maybe. Actually you know what? I take that back. This would not be a good beginner pattern because I'll explain. <laughs> Nothing against her pattern so far. I'm just doing the raglan area at the moment. So here's a picture of it. It's the Forager sweater, which I'm sure you're familiar with, but if you're not, that's what it looks like. I don't know if you can see the detailing, it kind of blasts it out. But there is a one by one rib here on your cuff, a one by one rib across the bottom, and there is a little split hem, like a little opening area, and then there's one by one ribbing around the collar. So it's a nice little like everyday type sweater, which are the kind of sweaters I want. Like I want sweaters I can throw on and just wear all the time. And this is an extra special sweater because uh, this yarn was given to me for my birthday. So my birthday um, was March, the end of March. And so my parents, uh, actually my family, gave me this for my birthday, which I'm so excited. And I got to use it. I started working with it already, guys. And um, I'm loving it so much. So the brand is Shepherd's Wool. And it's um, Stonehenge Fiber Mill is the uh, fiber mill that makes this yarn. And I'm super excited because it's a local to me yarn. It is a Michigan yarn mill, fiber mill. And um, this is 100% merino. It's a uh, worsted weight and it's like 250 yards per skein. So it's very, very th thick, you know, it's it worsted. So uh, the great part is even though her pattern calls for plotolopi and like a lace weight yarn held with the double and then knitted up, which I have extra plotolopi. Maybe I'll make a second one if I really like it, huh? <laughs> so, um, that's what it calls for, but the weight of that is approximately like a worsted weight. And so when I did my test, my little test swatch, guess what? My gauge swatch, it came to gauge. So I could work with this yarn. So here is the beautiful yarn that I got for my birthday. It's called Milk Chocolate is the colorway. It's so beautiful. You can see I like my neutral colors, but I like you know, I really want colors that I could wear so much that are be considered staples, classics. You know, colors that you're not going to go, okay, I'm sick of this now. I don't want it anymore. Because you spend, like, hours and hours of your life making these. So you want something that you're going to wear a lot. So you can see there's little flecks of, like, darker brown that periodically show up. But it's super fluffy. Here it is, skeined up, skeined up, wound up in a ball. So you can see it's very fluffy and has nice, uh, which will help with nice dish definition, which when I read the description of this yarn, that's exactly what it said. It said it would have excellent stitch definition. So you can see I'm almost done with my first skein. So this takes quite a few. So I got a bunch of it for my birthday, which I'm so excited about. So this is as far as I've gotten so far in the Forager sweater, but full disclosure on this. Okay, so like I said, it's very easy to work on. 
while I'm watching stuff at this point. In the very beginning, not so much because you have to do short row shaping on the back of the collar, which you really can't tell. <laughs> you cannot tell uh, by looking at this yarn, which is awesome because it just, it just blends like so well. So this is actually the back of the sweater and you can't see any of the short row shaping. It worked really well. It's seamless. It's amazing. And then her raglan, little raglan here increasing. So this is my pretty sure third attempt at this top down. So I first did this, the collar, and then I got down to about here and then I realized something's not right and I screwed up and I actually stitched through one of my um, progress, or not progress keeper, stitch markers. And, and guess what? It's one of those metal ones that is not removable. So, so I had to rip back because otherwise I'd have to cut my sweater and that would be no good. And sorry, I've got my dogs barking in the background too. We have all kinds of fun stuff going on here. Um, I never at all moment. Anyway, um, but got sidetracked. Anyway, like I said, this is the third or fourth attempt at this because I, then I had to rip back and I didn't put a lifeline in and I couldn't figure it for some reason. I could not figure out how to put in, like to take out this, you know, my cable and needles and then like put it in. <sighs> yeah, so I ripped all the way back, like from the very, very, very beginning and started over. Then the second time I did this, I got down to here. I actually got really far, really far. And I didn't read the pattern very well because I looked at it quickly and what I did was I skipped the alternating. There's two rows that you alternate and I don't really want to give it away because it's a pattern, but that's a paid for pattern. But you do like a row of certain stitches and then there you do a row of other stitches in between. I kind of skipped that in-between row for every row until I got to the increased number amount of stitches and I was like, hmm, this doesn't seem right <laughs> because when you finish with your increases, you're supposed to be here because then you have to, you know, um, like pull your stitches for your sleeves and hold, put them on hold. And I was like, oh no, because it was like here, you know, the length. And then I looked back at the pattern and I was like, yeah, I did. I totally skipped rows in between, which would double the length and make it the right length. So then I had to rip back again. This time I actually like figured out, which took a little bit of time, but figured out how to put the cable in with the needles to hold my spot. So I really only had to rip back to like where the uh, short row shaping stopped, which is down here. And then I went from there. So the other thing, the reason why I say this is not a good pattern for very beginner knitters, uh, I, I mean, you can do whatever you want, and if you want to take it on, by all means do, but you probably will do what I did, where you probably have to rip it out like three or four times. And the reason I say that is her pattern has a lot of abbreviations, which is totally fine, most patterns do, but some of them are... Um, I don't know, the, especially with the raglan, okay? So I followed the directions. I'm pretty sure exactly, because I read it like five times. And I don't think I understand raglan directions very well, because this is not the first time I've had this issue. It was a different pattern maker. And I, like designer, I totally ran into the same issue where I did not understand how to do the raglans. So, I basically, like, because the way she describes it, I don't think I'm going to give away the pattern, but the way she describes it is you do so many stitches, and then you put in, you know, a or two stitch markers for the raglan, 
and then you know you go so many stitches and then you do two more stitch markers for the raglan two more stitch markers for the raglan and then there's a spot where she says just to put one stitch marker and it's like so that's supposed to indicate where the last raglan is right your last raglan increase and I don't know about you but that's a little confusing because then you're you're trying to remember the stitch, like the, the row that is the raglan center around a single marker, which adds to confusion. I mean, I've been knitting for a little while now, and if it confuses me, someone who's brand, brand new, it'll probably confuse you so much. So what I did instead, <laughs> I figured out where this, like I had put a single one, and then I ended up putting in the double stitch marker with the you know raglan in the center so that way I actually have four sets so you know for each raglan which raglan is at the front and the back of your shoulder on both sides and now it makes perfect visual sense and I did this with the last pattern that I had to do the raglan increases on as well and that made a huge difference so uh, after going further with her pattern unlike the previous raglan pattern that I had, this one does not at all go into great detail about how the raglan is created. So if you're not someone who's had a lot of raglan um, experience, this would not be a very good pattern for you to begin on. I just feel like it, it really does assume, which is nothing to be said badly about Melanie Hoffman. I really like her pattern so far. Um, it's more to say that it is designed for people that kind of know what they're doing, you know? Like you've done a few sweaters, you've done a few raglans, or one, at least one raglan, so that you, you can figure it out. So, um, by all means, there's a lot of YouTube videos out there, which is what I would watch. I watched and I looked at a bunch of, uh, I just Googled, you know, raglan increases and stuff and looked at that and looked at her abbreviations that I had never seen before which, okay, that's the other thing. She puts, like everybody, there's a key that gives you what each abbreviation stands for. Well, some of them are not in that index and it's that's not a big deal, but if you're someone who's never knit before, if you see B-O-R, all caps, you might not know what that means and you can Google it, totally can do that. And it'll give you that information but she doesn't explain what that means on, on her pattern in the index. So if you're a very beginner person, you'd look at that and go, oh my gosh, what does that mean? So, um, and like I said, and, and that's in her like raglan section, explaining how to do the raglan, and it's extremely confusing. So, at least for me, like I said, the way I understand raglan, apparently in the written word, when it's like word for word how to do it, I just don't understand it, but if I see it visually, I've got it. <laughs> so I'm a very visual person, so it doesn't surprise me, but I kind of feel like I'm usually good with directions as well, like reading directions, because reading patterns, it's funny, I'm a visual person, but when it comes to patterns, uh, I if it's color work, totally, I, I can look at a, um, like a graph of you know the pattern and follow that no problem however if it is a stitch uh pattern like key or whatever you want to call it oh my gosh i have such a hard time following it i can't look at it and understand it when they try to tell you like the yarn overs and stuff and it's a it's an image versus written i can understand the written word better <laughs> So I feel like I'm kind of that weird hybrid where I am a really visual person when it comes to, you know, um, like looking at an image, like this is your one color, this is your other color, three of this color and whatever, and looking at that patterning and I'm good. And I, I, I mean, I have got it, no problem. But when I look at it, when it's like a stitch, it's a stitch that's in the diagram and it's trying to show you visually what that looks like I just <laughs> it doesn't make any sense but if I follow it written it makes perfect sense I'm like oh I've got this no problem I can go word for word like 
knit two together, like all the abbreviations, I'm like, I've got it now. You know, it makes sense to me. There's still a few, of course, that I have to look up because there's some stitches you just don't use that often. But yeah, no, I just, um, I feel like, like, wow, I went off on like a crazy tangent there, guys. But uh, the short end of it is Melanie Hoffman's pattern is awesome so far. Really enjoying it because it's just wonderful stockinette stitch and it's so mm, this yarn is so soft guys I'm, I'm really excited it's 100% merino it's wonderful I'm so grateful that to be support it was supporting not only a local to me fiber mill which is awesome and keeping them in business but also was um, <laughs> purchased from a local yarn store so I'm supporting local yarn stores here in Michigan. So that's awesome because unfortunately with everything going on in the world, we've already had one local yarn store closed. So trying to keep as many in business as possible is awesome. And I try to do that. It's just that for some bizarre reason, I keep wanting yarn that is not carried by them. <laughs> so this is, I will definitely purchase this yarn again. I've wanted to buy yarn from them. They have this yarn. From the, uh, I'm sure you've heard of it. If you haven't, you should check it out. It's from Stonehenge Fiber Mill and it's called Crazy, uh, Crazy Yarn. That's just what it's called. And um, a lot of yarn stores carry it. You can find it online. There's a bunch of sellers that sell it. And it's basically they just take different colors of fiber and they put it together in this wild and wonderful randomness so every single skein is different you may have some that are similar in colors so that they go really well together if you want something that's semi-cohesive but you can go wild and you can make fun socks that are like all different colors or sweaters even and shawls and i've seen some amazing things out of it so i would love to try that yarn at some point that would be way out of my comfort zone because like this is my comfort zone like here <laughs> this is and this is but um, like my shawl, the Shake It Up shawl I did with my advent calendar that was using all those wonderful fun colors. So it really made me step out of my comfort zone. I love that shawl. It's so soft and warm and big. So I highly recommend that one as well by Anna Joanna, Shake It Up shawl. And so far I really enjoyed her pattern for the um, surprise striped socks recommend that as well. And I definitely recommend this one by Melanie Hoffman so far. I mean, I haven't finished it yet. So this is just the very beginning, but really enjoying it. And I also highly recommend her channel. If you haven't checked out Melanie Hoffman's channel, I think it's called Mandarin. And um, I think it's her, the name of her company. She has, uh, she's so wonderful to listen to. She's just a lovely person to listen to. And um, she's, based out of France, I'm pretty positive, out of France, and um, she has a beautiful accent, and it's, and her, um, the cinematography and the music, it's always so wonderful to listen to, very peaceful, and, um, and she is a, a knitwear designer, and that is what she does, and it's, it's amazing that that, that's how she, she makes a living, and I really admire that. Um, so I, I love it. I love her videos. Unfortunately, she does not post videos very often. Um, not at all. And I'm sure it's because she's very, very busy. Uh, but when she does, it's so wonderful. So I will also, I will link her channel below uh, because I just, I, I really think it's important to support other uh, YouTubers, especially, um, you know, people that you, you admire and really, really enjoy. So I will uh, link her channel below. And um, also, Hey Brownberry, if you haven't ever checked out her channel, I have talked about her before. Uh, her channel is is so wonderful as well. Mars is just the such a positive soul and um, wonderful tips and tricks. And uh, that's how I learned how to knit those stripes with weaving in the ends. And um, I'm actually, I will just link that video below, but you can check out her channel. Uh, she's another one that I love watching and always look forward to her videos. And she does post more often, so there's that to be said. But, uh, wow, I actually made this a long, longer video than two weeks ago. 
Uh, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you're staying happy, healthy. And I hope you're creating. And uh, I'm feeling a lot better this week. So I, uh, I do want to share that. And for all of you that have been keeping me in your thoughts and prayers, thank you so much. It means so much to me. And it has, it has helped. It has helped. This has been a really good week. So I will uh, leave you guys with that. And, and I, hope, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. And I will see you next weekend. Take care. Bye.